Welcome to the video. If you're new here, my name is Chris and I build productivity apps. I usually focus on one productivity app for video. So today we're focusing on Ellie. So Ellie is a daily planning app. It's basically your to-do list and calendar combined. If you're someone that likes to time box and plan your day, you should go check it out. I think this is actually gonna be a pretty interesting video. So I was working on this AI feature for the app and spoiler, it did not make it into the app, but we'll cover that in the video. I thought it'd be kind of cool to show you guys a little bit behind the scenes of what it takes to build an AI feature, how I think about AI when it comes to building products and kind of explain why this feature didn't make it into the final product. That's basically what we're gonna be covering today. Okay, so let's talk about the AI feature. This AI feature was actually an enhancement on another feature that I was working on. The main thing I was working on was this daily planning feature for Ellie. It's the most requested feature on the feedback board right now. It's got like 180 something upvotes, basically just a guided walkthrough to help users plan their day. You can open the app in the morning, click a button, and then there's going to be three or four steps that'll help them kind of go through the motions of planning their day. The first step is just reviewing what you did the day before and kind of see, you know, where you spent your time. Second step is actually planning out your day and building out your schedule. The third step appears if you're overcommitted and you have just too much on your plate and it'll ask you, hey, maybe we should push some stuff back to tomorrow or the next week. The final step is just a final review and you can actually go time box your day onto the calendar. Something I realized with the last step was when I was going through the motions, there were three or four tasks that didn't have labels and I was kind of thinking it'd be amazing if, you know, Ellie could auto suggest labels for me. Maybe I can build some sort of label suggesting feature using AI. That was the feature that I decided to work on. And instead of just making this a general thing in the app where I can auto suggest labels anywhere. I wanted to just make it part of the daily planning feature and see if I can integrate it naturally into that workflow. So that's what I decided to build. Um, let me walk you guys through the steps of actually building this thing and I'll show you guys my thought process here. First thing I did was I kind of thought through how am I generally going to pull this off? There's actually a lot of AI models out there. Two of the really popular ones are the GPT API, which is created by OpenAI and Claude, which is by Anthropic. There are a lot of differences between them, but for my use case, honestly, I feel like I could just get away with either of them. At the time of recording right now, the latest model by OpenAI is GPT-40. So that was released about a week ago. That's what I actually decided to use as the model. Again, I could have picked anything, but that's what I'm gonna do. And at a high level, this is actually how these AI features work. It's actually super simple. You basically just feed in the API some instructions and then it'll just spit out a result. So in my case, plan was to feed it in the name of a task, like email Brian back, like that would be the task. What I wanted to do was pick from my list of labels and then spit out the appropriate label that it thinks matches the task. In this case, I have a bunch of labels, like personal label, admin work. The admin work is the one that I would probably select myself. Like all my emails are administrative work, so that's the label that I have. My plan was to feed it a list of these tasks, send this to OpenAI, also feed it in a list of the potential labels, and then it would just spit out the tasks with the appropriate labels selected. And so it would make its best guess on which labels match the task. You know, I could just say, hey, here's the task and here's the labels, go match them. But I knew that the results probably wouldn't be that great. Maybe it doesn't know what admin work is. Maybe it thinks that that means, I don't know. I don't know what it thinks it means, but maybe it doesn't know what that means. One thing you can do to actually optimize and give it the highest chance of success of picking and matching the right labels is to give it some context. While I'm also saying, hey, here's the list of tasks and here's the labels, go match them. I would also feed it in some examples. Here are 20 of my last labeled task. With that context of like 20 examples and you know, GPT-4 is actually pretty smart, I think it'll actually do a pretty good job at returning labels. Like that was the high level plan, was just to build an API endpoint that does that. Let me walk through my first iteration of the code here. First thing I did was make my own endpoint so I can just feed in a list of tasks and then it would spit out the tasks with the matched labels. So that was the first thing that I did was just build this. There's no UI, there's no nothing, it's just the endpoint. Yeah, basically the way it works is you feed in an array of messages and it simulates a chat and the response that OpenAI is gonna give you is the next message in that chat. So if the message is, you know, hey, return me a list of these things, then the message that's returned is probably going to be a list of those things. So in this case, this is what I did. I kind of told it, hey, you're an assistant that labels tasks. I'm gonna give you um, a list to choose from and some examples and all that stuff. And you're gonna have to go choose the relevant labels for these tasks. Then the next thing I did was I fed it in a list of 20 examples of tasks with real labels, like from my actual user account. These would be the examples. So it has some context of things that I've labeled in the past. Like it knows that anything with email is probably labeled as admin work, for example. Then the next thing is I gave it the list of all the labels it can choose from. I gave it the final instruction, which was suggest a label for these specific tasks, and I need you to output it in this exact format. And OpenAI is nice. They actually have this thing um, in the last few months, which lets you specify like what you want returned. So it will return a JSON object, which I can then use, send to the front end, and then do whatever I want with that. This is actually the code. I'm pretty sure it's less than 100 lines of code. Let's actually test this out. So I'm gonna feed it in three tasks. So we have follow-up email, schedule eye doctor appointment, and rollover not working. Here's the actual labels that I would choose for this. So follow-up emails, I'd probably label this as admin. 
eye doctor appointment, personal, and then rollover not working is actually Ellie Bugs. So that one might be a little challenging for a GPT to understand that. Okay, so it got eye doctor appointment, it got the rollover not working as Ellie Bugs, which is actually impressive, but it thinks that follow-up emails is customer success. Honestly, that's kind of close. Maybe I would actually label that customer success. Sometime. I probably wish that it labeled it as admin. So. Um, one way we can optimize this, which gets a little bit more expensive, right now we're only feeding it in 20 tasks as context. Uh, one thing we could do to make this more accurate is feed in 50 tasks. That'll make this a little bit more expensive for us, but if it has more examples, um, it could improve the accuracy a little bit. This is actually what the process of, you know, how do we make this thing more accurate? That's actually what the process looks like. It's doing optimizations like that, like increasing what we put into the context window there. Here's another optimization we could make, but I didn't end up doing. Let's say that we do up the number to 50 tasks, but it just so happens that, you know, 30 of the 50 tasks that I had labeled all had the same label. Like I've just been using this label over and over again. What's bad is that now the AI maybe doesn't have certain examples because this one label is being used so much that it just doesn't give the other labels a chance. So maybe one optimization I could do is in addition to pulling 20 of the most recent labels, I could also force get three or four examples per each label. That way I know every single label has some sort of example attached. So it basically gives each label a fair chance of being chosen. That's another optimization that I could run, make this a little bit more accurate. Never got that far, so I didn't actually end up doing that. When a lot of companies say like, you know, we we train the AI to be better. Sometimes that's true. Sometimes they do actually like fine tune and train and feed it more data. But a lot of the times, a lot of companies and startups, when they're training it, they're usually just improving what kind of context they send to the AI. That could mean bigger context windows, more accurate data into the context window. So sometimes the whole word training is a little misleading and that's what a lot of the companies are doing. Not everyone obviously, but um, I know a lot of startups are probably doing that. And that's how I would train and optimize this AI too. I would probably just improve the context window. Okay, so now that we have this back end, which again, super, super simple, I can just feed it in an array of tasks and it's going to spit out some potential labels. Uh, let's move on to the front end. This is honestly, I think where the hard part is, which is how do you create a really good experience that feels natural and actually intuitive for the users? The first thing I did was kind of like hook up the UI to the back end, and I made this button, which when you click it, it doesn't seem to be doing anything, but what the button's doing is it's scanning this list of tasks. It's trying to find any tasks that don't have labels. Then it takes those tasks and then feeds it in to that endpoint we just created. And I'm just printing it out into the console right now. So I didn't build any UI, so the user can't see anything, but if you look here, we can see. It got it correct, so it correctly figured out, okay, send follow-up emails does not actually have any label associated with it, so it sent it to the backend, and it looks like the backend returned and correctly labeled it as admin, which this is exactly what I would have chosen to. This seems to be working, so uh, that was the first step in kind of hooking up the front end to the back end. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here because then the rest was just kind of UI tweaks and trying to figure out what this looked like. Here was the final UI um, that I got to before I decided to pull the plug on the feature. What would happen is there would be a box that appears if there's any task that doesn't have any labels. If all the tasks have labels, we don't show the box because there's no point in doing that. So if we look at this example again, we can see that the box appears. It says LEAI, which, um, which is a placeholder. I wasn't gonna actually call it that. So it says there's one task without any labels. Do you want us to suggest some labels for you? Then when you click the button, it's going to show this little placeholder so the user knows something's happening. And then it goes ahead and actually puts the label directly on the task. Here you can see that it labeled this as sales team, which for this demo account I'm using, that's that was correct. I actually added this little star kind of thing so that the user knows, okay, this was like an auto-suggested thing. It's not like a normal label. And then it says, we successfully generated the label. Do you want to go ahead and generate new suggestions and redo it? I think when I got to this point, I realized that there was still a ton of work to do. Like the UX just, it didn't really feel that natural. Also while testing, I noticed that sometimes it would pick the wrong label. Honestly, any time it picked the wrong label, I started losing a lot of trust in its ability to pick labels. As I started using it and it started making mistakes, I kind of wanted to use it less and less. You know, it was kind of a gamble. I didn't know if it was going to pick the right thing or not. That combination of I wasn't fully, fully happy with the UX and I think it would take a lot more iteration to get there. And also I feel like the accuracy still needed a lot of work. That's what really made me put pause on the feature. So, so I think this is a good segue. Let's talk a little bit about how I think about AI features when it comes to building product and also why 
Ellie doesn't have AI in it as well. I think AI features are incredibly hard to pull off. When I think about the AI products that I use on a daily basis, the only two real AI products that I've stuck with are ChatGPT, which I actually use a lot, um, especially when it comes to programming, and GitHub Copilot. ChatGPT is pretty straightforward, it's a chat interface, but GitHub Copilot is super interesting when it comes to UX. I think they really nailed the UX when it comes to suggesting things for users. When I'm typing something and I just pause, it's almost like auto-completing what it thinks the rest of the code is. It's really great because I can just hit tab and it'll you know accept the suggestion or I can just keep typing and it'll go away. And so it's super seamless. I don't have to wait too long for something. It doesn't really break the flow. It seems pretty simple and basic, but when it first came out, that was a really, really novel way to do it, in my opinion. The other thing when it comes to accuracy, the usefulness of the product, I think, for both ChatGPT and Copilot, it's at this point where even with like, you know, a 95% accuracy rate, the amount of time saving that I get from, from the code completion, the pros definitely outweigh the cons there. And I've done it enough times where I'm like, the time saving benefit is definitely there. So that's why even with a non 100% accuracy rate, I still stick with these products. Let's take some examples of products that integrated AI and I actually thought were really good ideas, but then I actually naturally stopped using those AI features and I'll kind of explain why. And this isn't a knock on these products either. I think they did an incredible job. I think they're gonna keep getting better in the future. And this is just kind of my personal experience with them and why I stopped using them. The first example is uh, Superhuman, which is an email client. It's a really expensive email client and I use it. I send a ton of emails and they actually integrated this AI feature, which lets you draft emails. I thought this is gonna be great. They are going Going to use my tone when I'm responding to emails and this will save me a ton of time. I used it like three times and once was actually pretty great when I was trying to respond to someone, but then the second and third time when I started trying to draft more complex emails, the tone was just way too off from how I normally talk. I think maybe it just doesn't have enough context or something, but those two instances were enough for me to lose trust and basically not try it for a fourth time. Compared to something like Copilot where I can probably save like three minutes, you know, with their suggestion for sending an email, I'm probably only going to be saving like 20 seconds or something. So the time saving wasn't really worth it for me to put up with the error rate compared to something like Copilot. Even though the UX was amazing, just that trust factor was lost and that's why I churned from the product. Same thing with Notions AI, which I think was brilliantly executed from a UX perspective too. I used the summarization feature a couple times. I've used the autocomplete feature a couple times, but one of those things where I think it worked like 80% of the time, but those 20% really eroded the trust and I, you know, I kind of got bad results with it and I was like, okay, I probably won't use this anymore. Like maybe it's not as smart as I thought it was. I feel like I'm not alone here. I feel like a lot of users, they have a really high bar when it comes to trust. You basically have to have a 99% accuracy rate to maintain that trust. So I put pause on this, uh, removed it from the daily planning feature, and I ended up launching the daily planning feature without it. So this is actually my second attempt to do AI and LE. So my first attempt was to use the GPT-3 API, which was substantially worse than the performance of the current models today, to build an auto time boxing feature. So users can click a button, it would take the task for the day and auto time box it for them. What I found was that the performance was super bad. It would be doing things like scheduling lunch at 3 p.m. or putting something at 8 p.m. Even though I instructed it, you know, only time box things within this window. It just wasn't good at following instructions. Fast forward a year later with GPT-4.0, while I was working on the auto label features, one of my friends who was in my last video, you should go check it out. He decided to build a really quick endpoint to test where the capabilities of the models were today in terms of time boxing. The results were okay, obviously better than GPT-3, but they still weren't that accurate. We'll probably revisit it later, but decided to pull the plug on that too. But this is a good thing though, because what it means is that these models are gonna keep getting better. That'll hopefully reduce the trust problem that users have with the accuracy of these kind of things. The third kind of bigger reason that I think you don't see anything like this in Ellie though is I could spend a lot of time trying to optimize these things, get them more accurate, maybe even get it to like 97% accuracy, really nail the UX to feel seamless. But the thing is, nobody has actually requested any of these AI features. If you look at the feedback board, the only thing AI related is probably like auto time boxing your day. And that has like five upvotes. There's just so many other features that are not AI related that users want. And I think that's probably a better use of my time. That's honestly the biggest reason why you don't see anything like that in Ellie right now. Personally though, I love working on this stuff for fun. I love using the new technologies. So that's even why I'm doing this. So even though no one requested this, whole 
auto label suggestion thing. GPT 4.0 came out like a week ago, so I really wanted an excuse to play with it. I will still continue to work on stuff like this, push the boundaries, run some experiments, but it might be a while before we see an AI feature in Ellie. Before we wrap the video, if you guys have any ideas on AI features that would be cool for me to experiment, definitely comment below. And then if you guys have any products that you've seen that implement AI really well that you actually use on a daily basis, definitely drop them below. I need more examples of good AI UX and products and it's pretty limited from what I've seen. Please share that if you guys have any. Hopefully this was cool to see the behind the scenes of me building these kind of features and experimenting and kind of walking through the thought process of how I think about AI features. If you guys like this kind of content, definitely go check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day about building productivity apps. And obviously if you like this video, definitely subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.